barbecue was I, good. Oh, glad you liked it. Excuse me, I'd like to call the 11th regular of meeting of the 2020-21 Common Council to order. Would the clerk please call the roll? Alderperson Bourne? Here. Alderperson Donahue? Here. Alderperson Feldy? Here. Alderperson Ackley? Here. Alderperson Phillips? Alderperson Phillips? Okay. Alderperson Decker? Here. Alderperson Sorensen? Here. Alderperson Savaglio? Present. Alderperson Felicki Paneski? Here. Alderperson Mitchell? Here. There are nine present. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We cannot become what we want by remaining what we are. Thank you very much. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we'll move on to the approval of the minutes from our 10th regular council meeting held August 17th. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Move for approval of our minutes. Second. It, thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Next item on the agenda is the uh, Board of Water Works Commissioner's election, which will be held on September 21st of 2020. This is a term beginning October uh, 1st of 2020. So some of you have a letter of intent for one of our candidates before you. Um, if These will probably be emailed to the ones that are not in attendance. We're accepting other applications. If anyone's interested, please contact the clerk's office. Next uh, item is uh, mayor's appointments. City attorney. Thank you, mayor. Uh, the mayor submits the following appointment for your consideration. Uh, Gerald Jones to be considered for appointment to the Board of Police and Fire Commissioners to fill the unexpired term of Henry Young, whose term expires on April 21, 2025. Thank you, and uh, that appointment will lie over till our next meeting. Next item on the agenda is public forum, city clerk. The first person tonight is Deidre Martinez. You would come up to the middle podium. Can I take this down? And you can, yep, pull it down I don't a want little. to touch that. And if Hi you there. could just state your name and address for sure. us, please. Deidre Martinez at 1405 North Avenue, Sheboygan, Wisconsin, 53083. Okay, and you have five minutes to speak. All right, awesome. I will not take that much of your time. So that's the good news. Um, thank you. And uh, yes, I am a resident of the city, but uh, really I'm here on behalf of my position at the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce um, to advocate for one of our businesses and chamber members. So... Um, you know, I'm so pleased. A few weeks ago, I came and attended a meeting at the, uh, I think it was licenses hearing and public safety. And um, after years of Cheryl and House Divided, otherwise known as GGI or Gotta Get You In, I uh, was able to find some potential for resolution in a request that um, she and her business have had for a number of years with the city. So I just want to first of all say to the alders and to the mayor, thank you for your continued collaboration with our businesses and the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce. I think it's really important, um, especially amidst a pandemic, that we are supportive of our small businesses. Uh, they are the livelihood, they provide jobs, they provide tax revenue, they provide entertainment and hospitality, uh, which encourages and increases the economic vitality of the city of Sheboygan and the Sheboygan 
um, County as a whole. So I would just like to share in my support, and I'm hopeful that tonight you guys will decide to give um, House Divided an opportunity to have a uh, outdoor or a, a temporary outdoor seating opportunity available to them to prove to you and their neighbors um, that this is a wonderful choice and it's an opportunity to strengthen their business but also to strengthen their relationships with their neighbors as a whole and to you know show us what they're able to do in that space. So that's why I'm here to say thank you to ask you to continue to support your local businesses, um, pandemic or not. I think it's important that we work to remove the red tape that can be both uh, disheartening and debilitating to our businesses in the area. And when we work together, we can certainly make really positive things happen. So tonight, as you take that vote, please consider these words. And I ask that you uh, give Cheryl and House Divided an opportunity for a temporary order for outdoor seating. Thank you. Thank you. Bob Osborne. Hi, Bob. If you could just state your name and address for us, please. Bob Osborne. I am Becky Ketcher, fiance, and I go up, I live, well, not live up here, from the bar every Friday night for the last 16 months. I have no complaints whatsoever. I can sleep, watch TV, none whatsoever. So, uh, any other questions, that's it. I have no complaints whatsoever. We can do whatever we want. We don't have no complaints at all. Thank you. Is that it? How does that go? Uh, Becky Kessler, Kester? Could you state your name and address for us name first? My name is Becky Kester, 840A Wilson Avenue. Okay. I live upstairs from the bar. Okay. And I'm here because I heard there was complaints about at a different meeting. And I don't, I never hear people, there's never boisterous noise or anything. So I don't think there would be outside. There's, so. It's actually pretty, I, I do hear music because I'm only, I'm right above, but it doesn't interfere with my life in any way. So, and the people are always, like I say, calm. It's not like a boisterous crowd or anything. So I don't think that that would happen outside where it would interfere with the neighbors. And I'd like to see Cheryl have a chance. In this day and age, the outside seating is kind of important right now. And that's about all I got to say. Okay, thank you. Um, Robin Oppenheimer. Hi, Robin. Can you state your name and address for us? Um, my name is Robin Oppenheimer. I live at 2721 South 7th Street, and I am speaking on behalf of Cheryl. I am a previous employee. I worked for her for approximately a year and a half. Um, it is a very, um, I guess, considering the current social distancing that's going on, I think that everybody should be allowed to have outdoor sidewalks. I go down 8th Street every week, and I don't understand why all those restaurants are allowed to be on the city egress and have tables right up to the curb. I have to walk out in the street to get around those restaurants, whereas where I used to work at, at well, I call it GGI because that's what it used to be called, we wouldn't even be on the sidewalk. So I don't understand why it's an issue. Um, the only noise complaint I ever heard about, I was there and witnessed it. The police officer that came in looked at me and said, what noise? He said he didn't hear any noise till the interior door of the bar was opened. So I don't understand why residents complain about the noise there at all. Um, I've walked up to these residents' house that are complaining. 
I hear their TVs, not the bar. So I just don't think it's fair that they should be allowed to control Cheryl's income <clears throat> and stipulate whether or not she can have outdoor businesses when all of you are wearing masks. And isn't it safer to be outside than in an indoor environment? Just speaking as a concerned citizen, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Gary Buss. You state your name and address for us, please. <laughs> There we go, that's much better. My name is Gary Buss. I live at 840 Mead Avenue, Sheboygan 53081. Thank you. You have five minutes. Five minutes beginning now. Yep. What I would like to say is a lot of things that I was going to say have already been covered by Mrs. Oppenheimer here. But what bothers me the most about this whole thing is other places get away with this and I don't know how they do it. Did they go through the same process that Cheryl is going through? Or were they granted just an over the, uh, over the counter Go ahead and make some money, which is what every business is trying to do right now. I would like to see this put away, cut and dried. Give Cheryl the opportunity to uh, share in the uh, spoils of her neighbors and, of course, the general public. And if anybody has any questions about what we're talking about, please stop in. See what, we, uh, what we're looking at here. So uh, that's ba basically what, uh, what I have to say about the thing, but I would like to see this thing put to bed. Let her make some money and enjoy what life we have left. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. That's it for this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you to everybody for your comments. Um, next, we'll move on to a presentation, an operations improvement progress update by our finance director, Marty Halverson, and deputy finance director, Tara Dewey. Thank you, Mayor Vandersteen, members of the Common Council, Administrator Wolf, and guests. In 2019, the city of Sheboygan contracted Clifton Larson Allen to perform an operational assessment of the finance department. And earlier this year, they presented their findings. This evening, the Deputy Finance Director Tara Dewey and myself are here to provide you an update on the progress made on those items. Some of the focus areas of improvement, which assisted us in creating our priorities and were included um, policies and procedures, which these were fairly non-existent or those that we did have were quite outdated when we began. Internal controls, these relate primarily to our setups and structure and tend to be key risk areas as well as staffing and tools, the resources which are key in accomplishing all of these improvements. And the tools tend to be software related. Now what I will do is I'll hand it off to our Deputy Director, Tara Dewey, as she speaks uh, in more detail about some of these items. Okay, I'm gonna start off by going over some of the items that we have completed so far. Um, first off, we've been working on those procedures that Marty just mentioned that were identified in the CLA assessment. Um, to date, we have created 70 written procedures, and those are needed so that staff can be cross-trained. Um, and we've been able to create some efficiencies as those procedures have been reviewed, and a new set of eyes get to look at them that can lead to questions, investigation, and then we've been able to... Um, make some of our processes more streamlined as uh, the check run process being revised and is, is an example of that. Next, we've looked at all of the position purposes in the finance department, and we've updated those while creating the accountant three position purpose. So we've shifted some of the responsibilities between um, the position purposes. So that's why these tenured staff will be using the written procedures now because they're going to have to learn processes that they hadn't been doing um, in their previous time here with the city. Also, it was identified that a journal entry approval process needed to be created, and that was mainly for a separation to keep a segregation of duties. 
So right now I am approving the accountant's journal entries and the director is approving my journal entries. We've also worked on expanding our P-card program and we've closed some of the store charge accounts because the process of reconciling and tracking those expenditures was very inefficient. So we've created an Excel spreadsheet um, that is able to improve the departmental and summary tracking. So we have other staff that are working on improving that process still um, to make it work uh, even better. Then we have hired the accountant three position because the finance department, it, it needs more horsepower as Todd uh, mentions, to address the items in the CLA assessment, our audit findings, and also to prepare for staff, staff transitions as we have some very tenured staff that will be looking at retirement over the next coming years. Um, we've also been providing MUNIS training to the library and municipal court staff so that they're able to perform daily receding, which helps maintain that segregation of duties. And then lastly, we've been working on the budget book spreadsheet. So there's a Word and an Excel component that we've merged for each of the orgs, and all the files have been uniformly formatted, and that allows for us to be able to make mass changes to the files, such as this year we had added some accounts, and we're able to do that addition in one fell swoop instead of having to go into each of those documents to do that. Um, then I'm gonna move on to our items that are in progress. So we're currently reviewing the procurement, investments, and capital asset and depreciation policies and we're reviewing those and updating them. Earlier this year, Marty and I had attended a CIVMIC training on writing policies and procedures where we were given a recommended uh, policy template from CIVMIC and we intend to implement and use that, that template. Also a very important process that we're working on right now is a cash and bank reconciliation. The development of a full reconciliation process is critical so that we can start to have a month end close which has not been happening in the past We've been able to make some small changes that have made a big impact on, ex on streamlining that process. And I've been working with our consultant to fully establish the process and document the procedure. Next, we've been doing vendor cleanup. Our system has many vendors that are duplicated for various reasons. The IT department was able to extract the vendor list into Excel and then one of our accountants determined the vendors that need to be updated, vendors that can be merged, and verified 1099 filing requirements. We were also able to delete several hundred vendors that had no activity. Next is the purchase order process. Um, we have created a centralized city purchasing email so that we're not using an individual's email because when there's staff turnover, then you're, you're left with the problem of having to um, get those emails forwarded. And we'll also be working on merging vendors and then creating unique PO addresses, which will improve our process and allow for more POs to be sent automatically and electronically. Next is the sidewalk assessment process and conversion from AS400. We're working collaboratively with the DPW and we just recently met with them to identify a timeline of when assessment details are needed from DPW for the finance department to bill out the assessment, allow time for payments and payment plans to be set up before that's being put onto the tax roll. And lastly, um, the electronic file organization, as COVID hit and people were working from home, it was called attention to the fact that we really need to be able to find files efficiently and clean up our naming conventions of folders and files. So we're actively working on working on cleaning that up. I'll hand it back to Marty. Thank you, Tara. Definitely some progress being made there, um, but I'm sure your next question is what's next? Um, certainly we had some already pre-identified focus areas to uh, take as our next steps. Uh, as Tara had mentioned, 
One of those key steps is to test and review those procedures that were created. Uh, when you create 70 brand new procedures, you're bound to find some tweaks and, and modifications that are necessary. And our, our newly hired accountant three uh, is going to be performing some shadowing of the coworkers within the department. And as they perform the tasks, she can review the written procedure and identify areas that either are missed, omitted, incorrect, or even possibly recommend some, some modifications for more efficiencies. Uh, we'll also be putting some greater emphasis to our AS400 to Munis conversion. That's definitely something that I know many of you have already heard about. Um, some of the steps that have been taken is we've identified what we call our Munis super users. Uh, those super users will be forming teams and certainly in finance we have several super users identified. Uh, those super users, users will dig into the Munis uh, modules that are necessary uh, for in continuing the improvements. We've identified certain key areas uh, that the Munis modules need to be uh, converted from the AS400 and into Munis. Those would include loans, special assessments, <clears throat> capital assets, personal property, and, and then there are also others out there. Uh, certainly those align well with some of the other items that we've talked about with our policies and procedures. So these, these tend to be linked together, which then continues a unified approach of completing a full task. As we work through many of these uh, new module setups, we'll also be looking at correct mapping of accounts in the background. Um, and while we do that, we can review and look for opportunities to modify our fund structure and chart of accounts. Uh, those various improvements uh, include merging of funds, Currently, we've uh, identified several areas of fund cleanup uh, where we have, for example, tax incremental districts. We have debt service and capital <coughs> funds, and we're looking to merge that into one uh, tax incremental district fund. That will minimize the <coughs> cost transferring um, and or adjustments made between funds. It also keeps a cleaner uh, full picture of each tax incremental district. This was something that we did have a phone conversation with our auditors to kind of vet the pros and cons of that. Um, they actually have, you can do it either way, but they, they certainly see it more often with it being a, a single fund rather than split between the two. Um, also, while we're reviewing some of those objects, uh, within the funds, each of the funds, or accounts as we like to call them, uh, we're going to be reviewing for any redundancy uh, so that we can clean up and remove some maybe not as useful accounts, but also be able to identify areas where we're missing some, some key and in, intuitive type accounts uh, that will help department heads as they ex uh, code their expenses. Uh, we also will be looking at some of the account structure setups, such as how we utilize our do to do from accounts. Sometimes the software we found uh, has a better purpose for certain types of accounts, the way that they were structured than how we've been using them. So it'll create a more effective and efficient uh, workflow as well as month end and year end close. Um, we're also going to be working collaboratively with our IT department regarding Munis user role setups. Uh, this really gets at the internal controls and enhances and improves our uh, approval process both on transactional basis but also when creating new funds, new accounts, um, and, and transactions or even new vendors. On our next slide, um, it, it's key to have all of these initiatives but in order to show progress and keep tabs on all of these, you certainly have to have a good tracking mechanism in place. Uh, following the CLA assessment, uh, there was a summary document that was built with key areas of assignments of who the staff member is to lead the project, uh, who's all involved, what are the, the um, other departments involved, what are the key deadlines, both from a start or a starting point and a, a deadline uh, to complete the project. This, this document is being currently merged with a previously defined and built action plan for the department, as well as staff task uh, workloads. The staff, ta the staff task workloads also will then be able to have identified procedures linked to it so that we can follow through where the previous uh, procedures were, were built. Um, 
as Tara had mentioned, um, a lot of the uh, procedures that were created um, definitely have to be in a workable uh, system. And so we also will be building a uh, table of contents and a, a structure so that we can find these, uh, whether you're the primary staff member or a cross-trained staff member. So some organization of these uh, procedures will be key. Um, and then we'll also be looking to uh, provide quarterly updates uh, at our finance and personnel committee, um, and then also be able to come back to the Common Council with any updates and questions. So with that, um, I guess I turn it back over to the mayor if there are any questions uh, this evening for us. Well, thank you very much for that presentation. Are there any questions of the alders? Uh, mayor, I have a question, Alderman Boren. Please go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Marty, as part of your budgeting process for uh, 2021, have you been able to look back at the revenue streams for 2019 and compare them with this difficult year because of COVID with our revenue streams compared to 2020? Yeah, Alder Boren, that's a, a very good question. Um, certainly we're we're monitoring our adjustments in revenue. Uh, I know the mayor has been in contact with other uh, state and federal legislators providing updates. What we've been identifying up to this point, certainly the impact on the so, uh, sales tax from the county, that will have an impact. We've had some reduction in our licensure and um, permits being issued. Um, many of these are I wouldn't say as, as as significant as maybe the media has portrayed in other parts of the, the country. Um, I would estimate around $220,000, I believe was the, the number that the city could be impacted by on sales tax. Um, and we also have room tax to reductions. Those are the biggest areas. Um, at this point, there's, there's belief that the water utility could have half a million dollars of, of reduction in revenue. Wastewater though has not seen as significant of a reduction in revenue because where some businesses might be down, others are up. So they're, they're at this point projecting not as big of an impact. So then when we get into the, when we get into the budgeting process in early October, when, when uh, the proposed budget goes to uh, the various committees, you will be able to kind of provide where we stand with all those revenue streams and how they're going to affect your plans for 2021? That's correct. We will, again, one, uh, provide a projection uh, as we have always done in previous years. So uh, at that time is where we'll have a more accurate projected number. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, thanks again for the report. We appreciate it. Thank you. Next, we'll go on to uh, mayor's announcements. Unfortunately, uh, during the last few weeks, we lost some people who served quite a long time in city government. Leonard Becker passed away on Sunday, August 30th. Leonard served as a city alder person from 1972 through 1986. During these years, Len was elected as city council president. He also served on many committees, the Public Protection and Safety Committee, the Streets Committee, the Board of Park and Forestry, uh, the Public Works Committee, and the Industrial Development Commission. Leonard was 96. And we also lost uh, Henry Young. Henry Young passed away Wednesday, August 19th. Henry was a longtime member of the Police and Fire Commission and the Capital Improvements Commission. Our condolences go out to these families, uh, of these individuals who serve city government. Please stand with me and observe a moment of silence for them. Thank you. Uh, we'd like to ask uh, our residents to consider being a poll worker. Poll worker positions are needed for the presidential election on November 3rd. You can contact the city clerk's office if you're interested. Uh, citizen involvement is essential to conduct an open, accurate, and fair election. And we hope that you will consider participation in one of these positions. Um, 
To be a poll worker, you must be a qualified elector of the county in which your municipality is located, be able to speak, read, and write fluently in English, have strong clerical skills, be able to solve problems, and be an effective communicator. The uh, polls are open from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m., and generally you'd have to be working from 6.30 until 9 on election day, and the clerk does offer uh, split shifts so you can work a half day uh, rather than a full day. Next, I'd like to give an update on the COVID-19 situation in Sheboygan County. Uh, the numbers for today show that um, we have 1,160 active cases overall. That's up 75 from last week. Um, we have 98 active cases. That's down nine from last week. Uh, we have 1,052 cases that have recovered, and that's up 83 from the previous week. And at this time, we have eight individuals in the hospital, and that's up two from last week. And unfortunately, we had one additional death, so we've gone from nine deaths previously to 10 deaths this week. And uh, overall, we've had 30,042 uh, negative tests, and that's up 1,672 from last week. The Sheboygan County Health officials released a safe uh, start recommendation plan to reopen and included strong controls for businesses and residents and we continue to be in phase two of that plan that says that businesses need to follow the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation's best practices and sanctions for their specific uh, type of business. The Mead Library and other city buildings have instituted mandatory mask policies to enter the public areas of city buildings. Masks are provided if needed. And then recently, Governor Evers declared a public health emergency and signed emergency order number one relating to preventing the spread of COVID-19 and required the wearing of masks in indoor and outdoor public spaces where people congregate. Sheboygan County law enforcement agencies, including the police department, will utilize this order as an educational tool as they're asking citizens and visitors of Sheboygan County to voluntarily comply with the order. Remember to wear your mask and slow the spread of the coronavirus in Sheboygan. Join the Mask Up Sheboygan campaign. Thank you very much. Next, we'll move on with the consent agenda. That'll include items 2.2 through 2.12. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive and file all ROs, receive all RCs, and adopt all resolution and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Those items are before us. Is there any discussion on anything in the consent agenda? Seeing no discussion, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Alderperson Donahue. Uh, Meredith, it says the uh, poll is not coming up on my screen, but yeah. I vote aye. Thank you. Alderperson Bourne. Uh, same, it's not coming up on my screen either. Uh, I vote aye. Sorensen. Aye. Savaglio. Aye. Decker. Aye. Phillips. Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Ackley? Aye. Feldy? Aye. Felicki Paneski? Aye. Ten eyes. Motion passes. Next under reports of officers is item 3.1, which is RO number 57 of 2021 by the city clerk submitting a communication from the Wisconsin Department of Administration regarding the Sheboygan Christian School annexation. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive and file the document. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? 
Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 3.2 is RO number 58 of 2021 by the city clerk submitting a review letter and certified subdivision plat drawing for the Stone, Stonebrook uh, Crossing Edition number one from the Wisconsin Department of Administration. Alder Person Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive and file the document. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 3.3 .3 is RO number 59 of 2021 by the City Planning Commission to whom was referred resolution number 72 of 2021 by Alderperson Boren authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute a public asset access easement agreement between Wild Leslie Real Estate Holdings LLC, Visit Sheboygan Inc. and the City of Sheboygan regarding public and pedestrian access across the property located at 826 South A Street uh, and wishes to report that this matter was discussed at a regular meeting of the City Planning Commission on August 25th and after due consideration recommends adopting the resolution. Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, make a motion to receive the RO and adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 3.4 is RO number 60 of 2021 by the City Planning Commission to whom was referred General Ordinance number 15 of 2021 by Alderperson Sorensen and Boren and RO number 45 of 2021 by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Sheboygan Christian School filing a petition for direct annexation by unanimous consent for land currently located in the town of Wilson Greenfield Avenue and wishes to report this matter was discussed at a regular meeting of the City Planning Commission on August 11th of 2020 and after due consideration recommends receiving the RO and adopting the general ordinance. Alderperson Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the RO and adopt the ordinance. Second. Okay. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there, on that, the, uh, you already adopted the ordinance uh, in the consent agenda, so the proper motion would be simply to receive the RO. I'll amend the motion to receive the RO. Second. Thank you for the um, uh, new motion and support. Uh, is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Item 3.5 lays over, as well as 3.6. Item 3.7 and 3 through 3.9 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, item 4.1 is resolution number 77 of 2021 by Alderperson Sorensen and Donahue authorizing the expenditure of funds received as part of the criminal justice law enforcement drug trafficking response of 2021 grant solicitation. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I ask to suspend the rules. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. Thanks, Mayor. I move to adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Ten. 
Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 4.2 is resolution number 78 of 2021 by Alderperson Sorensen and Phillips, establishing a temporary polling location for the November 3rd election of 2020 for wards 15, 20, and 21 in the city of Sheboygan. Alderperson Sorensen. Thanks, Mayor. Asked to suspend the rules. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. Thanks, Mayor. I move to adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 4.3 is resolution number 79 of 2021 by Alderperson Sorensen and Donahue, authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute an acceptance form and accept the parking assessment revenue and analysis proposed dated August 18th of 2020 from WGI. Alderperson Sorensen. Thanks, Mayor. I ask for suspension again. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. I move to adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Chad. Chad. Chad, please proceed. Just a few comments on this document. So uh, last year when parking assessments went out, they were relatively high due to the uh, winter season that we had prior to that. And it raised a lot of questions as to how were the uh, ordinances for parking assessments put together? Why, why boundaries here and no boundaries there? So the idea behind this, and thank you for supporting the suspension, is to move forward with the same consultant that did the downtown parking study a few years ago um, and have them do a desktop review of the ordinances um, the plans, the boundaries, those types of things to report back to staff if there are any recommendations on changes that could be made before the next parking assessment process. So uh, it's a smaller contract, but the people are very familiar with uh, what happens in the parking districts in the downtown, and it makes sense to move forward with them. Thank you for that information. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Items 4.4 .4 through 4.8 will be referred to various committees. Item uh, 5.1 is RC number 130 of 2021 by the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee. To whom was referred direct referral RO number 48 of 2021 with the city clerk submitting various license applications and recommends filing the sidewalk cafe application in amending the change of premises for application for license number 3056, the House of Divided. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the RC and file the sidewalk cafe application and amend the change of premise to approve it. Second. Thank you for that motion. I need to approve the change of premise application as amended. So moved. <laughs> Second. And second. Thank you. Okay, the, the motion is on the floor. Is there any uh, discussion on the motion? Uh, Mayor, I have a question. Go ahead, Jim. Uh, is, uh, are, we voting, are we voting to approve the sidewalk cafe? Yes, this is a temporary sidewalk cafe permit. Okay, I have a question for Chad. Uh, Chad, last year this application came before the City Plan Commission, and I believe the sidewalk cafe at that time uh, was voted, uh, was not passed, and there was some side issues regarding some of the issues with the neighbors. There was some issues with some housekeeping on the property as far as, I guess, weeds going through the, the pavement and the parking lot, 
uh, and I'm, I don't remember all of the movies. Something with the dumpster. There was uh, there was some other issues other than what the, what the neighbors uh, were, and and there were all, quite a few neighbors at that particular hearing at the plan commission. So I'm guess I'm guessing what's changed in the last year. Is it just a, a new owner, or uh, what's going on? I'd have to refer to Attorney Adams to discuss that, but I think uh, when it was at the Planning Commission, it was a conditional use permit to occupy it forever or as long as they did. And I think the difference might be that this is a temporary sidewalk cafe for a 12 month period versus a conditional use permit is typically longer, but I would defer to Attorney Adams for that. Attorney Adams? Yeah, so first of all, um, a sidewalk cafe changed uh, their plan, and so they, they're not planning to go all the way out on the sidewalk. That's why that's been uh, filed and withdrew the application. But what they are approving is uh, what you are approving is the change of premises, which allows them to put chairs and tables, etc., and serve alcohol outside their building, kind of more in the parking lot area, closer to the uh, to the front wall. Uh, and the reason why this is coming through this way, rather than going through plan commission, is as, as Chad noted, it is temporary. It is, less, it is a 12-day request, and um, sort of under our zoning code, 12 days is considered temporary, more than that would be uh, considered permanent. Uh, the idea here is that uh, while there were some issues raised uh, by the neighbors, and, and passed, um, even though staff did uh, always uh, recommend approval of this, and, and there was some discussion by some of the neighbors at, at a couple of the LHPS uh, committee meetings discussed this, uh, going with a temporary process and uh, making some changes to their uh, application that they were willing to make uh, to ensure that, in essence, you, we had a plan going forward that, that, we could, that, that they could do, they could look at, uh, and then next year, should they try to do that again, they will have a track record. I'm not aware of issues with regard to the garbage out on the yard or anything like that, um, but uh, but the primary issues that were raised at the uh, meetings all had to do uh, with um, noise, basically. Thank you for that information. Is there any other questions? And if if I could just ask, if you're not speaking, can you mute your mic? We're getting a lot of feedback, feedback on in the council chamber. Uh, so Jim and Marcus, I see you guys are muted. So if you're not talking, can you mute? I, I just had, I, uh, I have one more question and that is, I, I understand that this is a new ownership then, uh, that was, uh, new owners from one that was GGI. Uh, I don't believe it's new ownership. Um, it's, there is a new, uh, uh it, it's a new business name. It's not even a different business entity. Was the uh, was the vote of the committee unanimous uh, to approve this? Yes. Yeah. Person Sorensen. Yes, it was. Any other questions? Seeing there's no other questions, I'd ask the clerk to call the roll. Ten eyes. Motion passes. Good luck with the uh, the permit. Uh, we'll move on to item 5.2, which is uh, RC number 129 of 2021 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred resolution number 74 of 2021 by all the persons Donahue and Bourne authorizing city officials to execute an updated agreement between the city of Sheboygan and the village of Kohler for the operation of a joint municipal court and recommends adopting the resolution. Alderperson Donahue. I uh, move to receive the report of the committee and adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? 
Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Under general ordinances, item 6.1 through 6.3 will be referred to various committees. And I'll turn it over to Attorney Adams for other matters authorized by law. Thank you. 7.1 is an RO by the city clerk uh, submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2020 and June 30, 2024. That'll be referred to the licensing hearings and public safety committee. Uh, next is a contemplated closed session. Uh, 8.1 is a motion to go into closed session under exemption provided. Um, Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to convene in closed session under exemptions provided by Section 19.85, Wisconsin statutes, where competitive and bargaining sessions require closed sessions related to the possible lease and development strategies related to the services provided by the Senior Activity Center of Sheboygan. Would the clerk? Thank you. Would the clerk please call the roll for closed session? Ten eyes. Motion passes. We'll take a short uh, two-minute uh, recess and re and then reconvene. And the council will adjourn in closed session. So this will end our broadcast for this evening. Thank you very much. <laughs>